Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chowan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video lecture, we are going to solve a problem based on preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Okay, so there are seven processes in this question and the priority is given the highest number suggest highest priority and the lowest number suggest lowest priority according arrival times and burst times are also given. So now we know that the preemptive task that means we can break the execution at any time here we are going to break execution because it might happen that the process which we are currently running at the same time there is new process coming to and the priority of that new process is highest than currently running process so naturally we have to stop the currently running process and give the priority to the highest running pro highest priority process okay so that can we find out from here so the first step is to solve or to draw a gantt chart so starts from zero fine so check is there any process coming at zero yes there is a process and that is p1 process we don't have any other choice that's why we have to schedule this p1 process though its priority is lowest than all other processes fine so p1 process we have scheduled here but now the problem is that for how much time we are going to run this p1 process so we are the answer for this is that we are going to run p1 until the next process is coming to your system okay because we have to check that the process which is coming next having highest priority or not if it is having highest priority we have to preempt our previous task if that is not having a highest priority that means it is having a lowest priority that means we can continue our current running task okay so p1 we have started here and the next process arriving at 1 having priority higher than your currently running process that means we have to stop p1 process okay and we have to schedule the new process that is p2 so as we have completed p1 by 1 so it becomes remains 3 okay now again the same question that means how how much time we are going to schedule this p2 so check the new job arriving at 2 that means we are going to schedule this p1 p2 process at only one time so 1 plus 1 becomes 2 and this gets reduced by 1 now again check the new process is coming for the 2 that is priority 6 which is the higher priority than previous process so schedule this p3 okay for how much time when the next job coming in the next job is coming at 3 and having the highest priority than currently running process so we are going to print this p3 process and start p4 process so it is for 3 so again 1 gets reduced it becomes 2 next one is p4 so for how much time it is again decided by the next job next job is coming at 4 okay and the priority of this is 8 which is lowest than you are lower than your currently running task because currently running task is having higher priority okay that means we can continue our current process fine so how much time we are going to uh, complete it when the next job come next job is coming at 5 and it is having the higher priority than your 10 okay that means we can schedule this p4 until 2 time units and that is 3 plus 2 becomes 5 so it becomes 3 fine so now check the p5 process having the highest priority than all other processes that means now we can schedule directly this p6 process till the completion so we are going to schedule here p6 till its completion and that is 5 plus 4 9 that means this is uh, removed from your system now in between this we have completed time unit from 0 to 9 and all arrival times for all the processes are included in your 0 to 9 fine so now you can directly schedule according to your priorities fine so the highest priority then this p6 process is 10 so 10 remains 3 so here we are going to schedule this p4 process for 3 9 plus 3 that is 12 so it is it goes from your system fine the next one is this so p7 process for 6 so 12 plus 6 it's 18 fine so your gantt chart will be like this now the next is um, what is next okay 9 we have completed 10 we have completed it is 8 so 8 that means p5 process 
and it is the time unit for 1 that is plus 1 19 now the highest priority is 6 that is p3 process that becomes for 2 so 1921 next one is I'm going to draw gantt chart from 21 here that means this 2 is completed it goes from your system now p2 process having the higher priority so p2 process for 1 so it becomes 22 it is it goes from your system and now the last one is p1 having the lowest priority and its execution time is 3 that means it becomes 25 after completion it goes from your system so naturally the process which having the lowest priority p1 process having the lowest priority than all other processes in have to scheduled last so p1 at scheduled last fine okay so in this example as we have time limit so I have drawn the table and check out that table how we have calculated that so you know that completion time can be calculated from this Gantt chart so the completion time is calculated from right hand side to the left hand side so p1 process completion time is 25 so completion time is 25 again for p2 process check here p2 22 so it is 22 and the remaining is same okay now the turnaround time is calculated from the given formula that is turnaround time completion time minus arrival time fine so completion time is 25 arrival time is 0 that means 25 minus 0 its answer is 25 again 22 minus 1 sorry okay so next is 22 minus 1 becomes 21 21 minus 2 it's 29 the remaining is same waiting time you know that waiting time is calculated from the formula turnaround time minus burst time turnaround time is 25 minus 4 21 21 minus 2 19 the remaining is same okay fine and here response time you know that response time is calculated from left hand side to the right hand side the first instance of particular process so here the p1 process occurs at 0 okay and the arrival time of p1 process is 0 that means 0 minus 0 answer is 0 okay next left hand side to the right hand side next process is p2 p2 process response time is 1 1 minus its arrival time is 1 so 1 minus 1 0 okay here the we are we are going to directly check last process so that is p7 process so check from left hand side to the right hand side that's 12 and 12 minus its arrival time that is 6 12 minus 6 it's 6 fine so that's why the answer like this now the last part is average turnaround time you have to calculate the addition of this column that is 105 divided by total number of processes that is 7 so its answer is 15 and last is average waiting time the addition of this column divided by number of processes and that is near about 11.42 fine thank you if you like this video please press like and subscribe button Thanks for watching.